Howdy once again, YouTube viewers and Gear Gadget fans. Thanks for tuning into the Watch Box review this time. This time around, we're taking a close look at the Android Stance Automatic. And you're seeing the watch here on my 65 millimeter wide wrist. The watch overall is very flat, angular, wide, uh, with basically zero curvature at all. And watches like this generally fit me very comfortably. Um, and it's what I like the most. So let's turn the camera around, readjust lighting, and take a closer look here. Okay, so I'm going to take the watch off <clears throat> and give you guys the details. So start off with the overall bezel diameter is 50 millimeters going across. The case width, including the crown, is 55 millimeters. The lug end to lug end length is 56 millimeters across. Now, the actual extension of the watch protrudes out a bit from there because the solid end links from end link to end link extend out 65 millimeters. So this is a big watch, no doubt. If you have small circular wrists, don't bother. It's going to be very uncomfortable. It sits pretty tall up off the wrist, too. So the overall case thickness from the flat of the case back to the crystal is 17 millimeters. The crown itself is a 10 millimeter diameter crown. And it protrudes out 5.7 millimeters from the side of the case. The lug width is a standard 24 millimeter wide and it uses a pair of spring bars, one bar at each end to secure the bracelet. The bracelet itself is a standard 24 millimeter straight bracelet, so there's no taper at all to this bracelet and either width or thickness. Each link in the bracelet is kind of a brushed finish and it's about uh, three and a half to four millimeters in thickness for each link and is held in place with friction split pins and it's a very easy bracelet to adjust it's not a comp more it's not the more complicated pin and collar type designs that you typically see the clasp used is a standard fold over clasp with a diver flip lock safety so it's a pretty well made clasp overall my general preference is for scissor type clasps but if i get a fold over clasp that's really well made really tight and really secure Hey, I'm all for that. So Android did a really good job fabricating this particular clasp and it locks in very securely. As you can see here, I'm actually, you need to actually press both uh, pushers on the side to get the clasp to unlock. Pushing one or the other simply is not gonna do that. So it has a pretty good degree of built-in redundant safety in that sense. Uh, the clasp has three little micro adjustments here along the side, again, spring bars, very easy, no problem. Um, let's see, so let's take a closer look here, I guess into the dial, and take a look at the business end. What you're looking at is a, a, a matte black dial material with a deep stadium dish kind of going around the perimeter there. All the luminescent markers are applied, circle, circle dots. The hands are semi-skeletonized broad sword hands and they're very bold, very distinct. You can see the sweet motion second hand going around with a small uh, luminescent painted Android logo at the tail end of that hand. The bezel is a unidirectional timing bezel. It's not really a diver's scale, but it does have a little triangular detail at the zero zero position. And it's a 120 click and it's very smooth, firmly engaging rotation. Um, Android dive bezels are really, really well made and there's not a lot of looseness or slop basically on their designs. It doesn't rattle when I tap on it, so that's a good thing. Um, looking deeper into the dial there, you can see the date window at the three o'clock position with a black on white date wheel in there and a small uh, magnifier crystal. The crystal is on the inside of the case so that it doesn't protrude out or anything like that and nice job overall on the dial very nice um, I think the paint uh, luminescent paint is super luminova and it's, it glows really bright and I'll show you guys that uh, in a little bit so the bezel itself is black ionic plated 
and it's kind of like a semi coin edge texture around the perimeter and it's a really really good timing device or timing feature so let's take a closer look here at the crown you're looking at a uh, semi-standard Android crown. It's a screw locking crown. It tightens down and securely seals out water. The water pressure resistance specification on this watch is 50 ATMs or 500 meters. That's plenty more uh, for what I'm doing uh, in the pool activities and swimming and free diving and things like that and snorkeling. No problem there. And it's a nice, nice presentation overall on the front side. So let's take a closer look here at the case back. It's a standard pretty standard generic looking uh, Android screw in case back it's an exhibition case back so it has a crystal there and you can see the Siegel TY2806 automatic movement so the TY2806 is kind of Android's affordable automatic movement um, it's a 21,000 ish heartbeat there and you can see that with the ticking motion of the sweep second hand and this one's no different. You hear a lot of stories about the Seagull stutter with their second hand. And this one is no different. You can kind of see it jump around a little bit as it sweeps around. And that is not a defective movement. Um, that is the accumulation of tolerance buildup in the gear mesh train that drives that sweep second hand. So the, end, so the, the gears in, that are inside there that drive the second hand have a certain amount of free space and what you see in the end result is a slight stutter appearance to the second hand that's one of the things you get when you pay for a more expensive higher heartbeat movement from a uh, higher dollar value basically movement so pros and cons to that now technically it's not gonna it doesn't affect the accuracy of timekeeping it's strictly a cosmetic appearance type of thing so for me it doesn't bother me for a watch in this price range which is about a hundred to hundred and twenty dollars I can kind of forgive it for that because it hits on so many other key points that I look for in a water resistant sport type of watch so anyhow um, the other thing about the TY2806 is it's a bi-directional winding rotor so that wind rotor there is going to rotate either clockwise or counterclockwise and wind your mainspring. Um, it is a hacking automatic movement. So when you pull the crown, when you unscrew the crown and you pull the crown for timing adjustments, your sweep second hand stops and you can thereby synchronize the watch as you would a quartz watch. So not all affordable automatic movements have that type of feature. So, and it's also wind manual windable at the crown. Okay, so some pretty good feature sets built into a watch and a watch movement in this price range, I think. Um, it's a generic looking wind rotor. I was kind of hoping Android would uh, stamp their little name on the rotor there, but they chose the more affordable route. Hey, no big deal there, no problem there. So um, you can see the name and model number stamped into the back of the case back. This particular model stance is a limited edition, and I think they all are. They make different colors, different dial colors and different dial combinations and things like that, but it's a limited edition of 888. This is number 178 of the collection. Okay, so there you have it. That's the technical rundown. Um, the crystal is, I believe, just a mineral crystal. It's not sapphire. So you're going to want to be careful with that, okay, in a certain sense of it's, it could scratch easier than a sapphire crystal. Um, but it's nicely done regardless. You can see it's got a nice angle bevel on the side, which kind of reflects light a little bit differently, a little prism type effect going around the perimeter there. Very nice overall. So, um, not, as I mentioned earlier, none of this watch is smooth or curved or soft or jelly bean like it's a very angular case a very flat angular watch and it happens it happens to fit my wrist very comfortably but if you like a more soft curvy type of look then you know this might not be the watch for you so um the case lugs the i'm sorry the case lugs i guess and the end links the solid end links are superbly manufactured android I'm not sure how they managed to do it in this price range but they managed to really machine fabricate a really tight fitting solid end link and that's no that's no exception here you saw my android uh... transocean fifty two same thing no different here superbly tight so, I mean, there is no slop and no free play at all in these uh... solid end links here so um... 
let's see, it's a, like I said earlier, it's a standard 24 millimeter wide strap lug width, so you could you could put on any number of 24 millimeter wide bracelets or, or aftermarket straps should you should you so desire. So I happen to like the OEM bracelet. It's really nice and really well made, and I like it a lot. It's very comfortable. So anyhow, let's dim the lights a bit, <clears throat> loom charge a little bit here, and show you what I really think is one of the more outstanding features about this watch. So you've seen me do this before, and actually my camera here doesn't do the loom justice. My eyes, in a dimly lit room here, my eyes can very easily see some glow here, just sitting, just looking at the watch, but the camera doesn't do it justice, so I am i don't really need to loom charge this here in person, but in order to capture it on film, uh, I'm going to charge it up with my flashlight, and you've seen me do this before with just about all my other watches, so... This watch here is a year old, so you're seeing its share of scuffs and scratches and things of that sort and blemishes and what have you. So keep that in mind. It's not a, it's not a brand new watch. I don't do brand new watch reviews out of box. I wait to use it for at least three or four months, bang it around a bit, and come away with a more a very solid long-term impression here on my reviews. So that's kind of why I do that. Anyhow, okay, so there's your loom. Outstanding. One of my favorite looms uh, for this price. Um, you can see there the bezel has a really nicely done uh, luminescent accents going around there at all the tick marks. Really, really cool feature. It's it's uh, nice, nicely done overall. That's a very expensive feature, by the way. A lot of dive tools have that. Water sport watches have that that type of feature. Uh, it's not cheap to do that and. You know, for a hundred and twenty dollar watch to have that, I think that's a great feature. So, great job, Wing Liang, master watchmaker of Android and company CEO, did a great job on that. So, one of my minor loom peeves is when the hands glow substantially brighter than the rest of the dial, and that is the case a little bit here that you can see in my video, but. Not really. This is this isn't my worst offender in that regard. So, the other nice little loom feature they've done is crown loom. Now this is strictly purely a cosmetic type of thing to make it look goofy or look cool. But they actually filled in the emboss of the Android logo there on the crown. Really cool feature for again not a whole lot of money. So, alrighty. So let's hit the lights and close up shop here. So. Uh, this is one of my favorite watches. It's, I keep coming back to it, and it's just, hey, it just hits on all the key points I look for. Um, if it had used like a Citizen higher heartbeat movement, that would have really knocked the ball out of the park. But it also would have probably nearly doubled the price range of this watch. So the fact that they're using a Siegel TY2806 to keep the cost down, hey, that's cool. You know, I can, I can live with that. Crown winding, bi-directional winding rotor. Okay, hacking automatic. I can live with that. That's, you know, for watching this price range, you know, that's not too bad. The the pay, the, the downside is a slightly stuttering second hand there that uh, hey, well, okay, you know, I can take I can I can take that. That doesn't really bother me all that much. So, um, I kind of wish it had a black date wheel. I don't like black dials with white date wheels, but that's a minor nitpick. But a black date wheel would have totally uniformly um, smoothed out the overall appearance I think of of the dial overall so I wear this watch actively in it in and out of the water Pacific Ocean salt water swimming pool wave pools water slide parks you name it this watch has been there um, it has its share of desk diver swirls and desk dive marks I wear this watch um, to the office regularly so and um, but it hasn't given me any bit of trouble I think of all my watch I, I wear some pretty big bold uh, borderline garish, I think, watches, you know, my, you've seen my other Invictas and things like that, and this is the watch here that really just collects the most positive feedbacks and comments. People are just so blown away that a big, bold, angular watch case and such a clear, distinct, easy reading dial, just it just jumps out. I mean, it, it really just jumps out across a room. Hey, you've got this thing on your wrist, so...
Anyhow, that is it for this segment of the Watchbox Review. Hope you guys found this review uh, very informative. And I've got some more reviews rolling out here beginning beginning part of the spring. I've got a ceramic Russian diver that I'm going to be reviewing shortly, as well as a Manbushiji Marina Militaire homage. So anyhow, stay tuned for those, and I'll catch you guys later. See ya.